to Big Oggy World. Now, John, your dinner's in the slow cooker. It is. Woohoo. And I'm going to make one of your favourite puds. I'm having a good day. I've got basically non spag bowl, but I've got bolognese in the slow cooker. And I'm having, what am I having? Pudding? Lemon meringue pie. God, you've got to love lemon meringue pie. And you've got my baby out. Yes, Kitty the KitchenAid is out. Now, Kitty is out because we're going to make pastry. We're doing it properly then? Yes, we're going lemon meringue pie from scratch. Okay. Now, this recipe I have done many, many times because it was one of the favourite things that the expats loved in Spain. So, initially I was a bit worried about trying it, but I did it and it's absolutely easy and the results are fantastic. So I have in the past, and you can do this too if you like, made it by using a sheet of short crust pastry. So you don't need to make your own pastry. But the pastry mix is very short in here. You're gonna add in some um, ice and sugar, which makes it a bit shorter. Um, and you can just whiz it up in the food processor. So I'm gonna show you the whole recipe from scratch. And then you can take the bits that you want. If you want to use ready bought pastry, that's absolutely fine. Or you can do the full shebang. Yeah, if you don't want to do the pastry, I'm going to add chapters onto this video so you can always jump to the chapter which says Next finish bit. the pastry bit. Okay. And this recipe is coming again out of my good old fashioned faithful women's Australian Women's Weekly um, Cakes, Bakes and Desserts book. So, to start off with, you need to grease yourself a 24 centimeter well done got it right, got it right this time. fluted tin um, this is only a 23 but it's close enough That's and enough. I, I think probably Australian measures are a little bit different than ours. So. between friends absolutely so the next thing you're going to do is to make your pastry now I'm going to whiz it up in the, the pro processor so literally all you do is put your flour John will put the complete ingredients below with all the amounts and stuff so in goes your plain flour. A tablespoon of ice and sugar. Your cold chopped butter. This is unsalted butter. Um, I guess for the pastry it won't really matter if you use salted or not, but the um, meringue, the lemon bit, is saying to use non-salted, so although I'm pretty sure when I was in Spain I just used normal butter. So. Right, that's now at my breadcrumby stage. Perfect. And the next thing you're going to do is add your egg yolk. Just one egg yolk, not no white on this bit. And two tablespoons of cold water. Doesn't sound like much, but along with the egg yolk, it will do the job. Now, it's not there yet. What we want is for it to come to together in a ball. So the two tablespoons of water is basically a guide. If you need to add a little bit more, do but add it very carefully because you don't want your pastry to become too sticky. So just play it by ear a tiny bit at a time, there's no rush. There. And there you have it. First off, is put a little bit of flour on your table or surface or whatever you're using and then you want to bring your pastry together and knead it for a few minutes until it becomes sort of nice and elasticy and not too sticky and whatever so give it a good bring together with your hands basically okay so the easiest thing to do now, because this is, as I said, a short pastry and you're gonna need to roll it. 
is to get two sheets of grease proof like this pastry on, put the lid on as such and then roll between the two sheets of grease proof and that way it won't stick to your table. So excuse me when I get me rolling pin. Right I think that might be about it. Mm, tiny bit more. A bit more for the shrinkage. More to go up the sides than anything. Yeah. That should be fine. So I have greased my tin with um, cake release. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Didn't know about it before, but we used it recently and it's excellent. So now you can literally just peel off the top layer, pick up the bottom layer and flop it over like so. Then you peel off the, the other piece reposition but work quickly and carefully because the warmer the pastry gets the easier it's going to be to break and if you can you don't want any gaps in the bottom because the last thing you want is your lemon filling to be in the bottom of your oven not in your cake tin so just line it like that I'm not even going to cut it off at this point Go around with your fingers and sort of try and make your little fluty bits like that. Then I'm going to scrunch this up. So that it will sit in the bottom on top of my pastry again. like that and that is going to go in the fridge for half an hour to rest and that's important because if you don't rest it it will shrink you will get shrinkage so don't cut off any spare bits at the moment just put it in the fridge leave it for half an hour I'll tidy up and then we can crack on with our lemon bit okay so the pie case has had a good 35 minutes or so in the fridge to chill back and I'm going to leave the grease proof paper in and fill it with bacon beans or any sort of beans or rice, whatever you've got, basically. You need to pre your oven to 220 degrees fan forced, which would be what, 240 ish? Yeah, a bit high, 240. Yeah, it's a high heat. And you're going to put them in or put it in for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we are going to take it out, take out the grease proof and the beans, and then put it back in for another 10 minutes. And by that time, it should be nice and golden brown. Um, once we've done that, then we can crack on with the like the pie filling. Once you've done the pie filling, you need that to refrigerate for a couple of hours. So we need to get this bit done, and then we can wait for the meringue top. So in it goes. 15 minutes, 2.20. So now we're gonna do the lemony filling. And this is the biggest job really. So what you do is you take your sugar, your caster sugar. This is the first amount of sugar that you will see on the list. On the, the ingredients list, there are two amounts of caster sugar. So this is the first one. The second one you use for the actual meringue. With your caster sugar, you mix in your corn flour. That goes into a medium sized saucepan. Corn flour sticks, even though it's not it's super fine stuff. It is, yeah. Now, you're going to combine those two, and the easiest way I find to do it is with a whisk. And then into that, you are going to add your water and your lemon juice. 
So you're going to do it a bit at a time. You can mix two lots together. It doesn't need to be separate. Are we using lemon juice just out of the bottle? Yeah. You can obviously juice lemons if that's what you want, but this time of year the lemons aren't brilliant. So I've just used lemon juice, pure pure lemon juice, like Jiffy Lemon, yep. out of the bottle. So you're going to mix this in and keep whisking because you want it to be smooth and not lumpy basically. So I'm going to mix it in first and then I'm going to put the heat on. It sort of gets thick as you're mixing it even though there's no heat in there. Now, over sort of a medium to high heat, you want to keep mixing it, but you're going to bring it to a boil and you're going to keep stirring it as it thickens, just like that. Really from heat. There we go, so that just suddenly happened. Yep, as with everything, it's like nothing's happening one minute and then all of a sudden it goes really thick but also slightly clear slightly before it was like milky and now it, it's not. So the next thing is we're going to leave it for a little, a few, a minute or so and just keep stirring it. Okay, so now it's cooled just slightly. I've taken it off the heat and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our lemon zest And we're going to start whisking in our butter. So I'm going to take a few pieces first and give it a good whisk. And the rest. Now this is cold butter again, so hopefully it's going to start chilling down the mixture. The mixture, yeah. The mixture, once you start putting um, the butter in, it starts loosening up again a bit. And the last thing that needs to go in is the egg yolks. And you sort of think, well, it's gonna go like scrambled egg, but for some reason it doesn't. So I'm gonna plop these in sort of one at a time if I can. One. Okay. Yep, nice. I need to get around all the edges yep. as well, right? This has helped turn it even more yellowy. It's certainly going yellow now. Now if we add our posh egg yolk, it would be, yellow anyway. it be absolutely orange. orange, even though it's lemon. These are just bog standard from the supermarket. Last one, and it goes. There we go. Ah, that's a lemon curd, I would reckon. It is, it's very similar yeah. to lemon curd. How we used to do that, how to make curds, but that is pretty close to a lemon curd. Okay, I'll take over now. Yeah, right. perfect. Thank yeah. you very much for that. So, the next thing is to put this into the case. So, I'm going to set it aside a minute while I trim off my edges to my case. Okay. <laughs> Wait for the bloopers video, everybody. It'll be coming out in a oh, well, month's time. Me. That works. Yeah, that that made good. me sweat a bit. That was good. Don't right do that then. again. So, we have given our <laughs> pie thin in a good 10 minutes to cool down. Give it a good stir because it starts to sort of thicken up and set. So you want it to sort of still be a bit pliable to get it into your case. Breathe, love, breathe, don't do that. My case, don't do that. No, my case is now cool, but it has got some air bubbles in it. But what I was gonna, what I was trying to say was, don't worry about that because when you put the pie filling on, it will burst those bubbles anyway and it won't make a blind bit of difference. So we, we are making a bloopers video of bits and pieces. The more, more recipes we make, the more bloopers there'll be. Right then. So into that goes our lemon pie filling. And very lovely it looks too. It tastes blooming handsome. Here we go. You can sort of squidge it out a bit. I mean, it will level itself. 
but you can just give it a little bit of a helping hand. Now, that needs now to cool or refrigerate for two hours to let it cool completely. And then once it's completely cold, then we'll do the meringue top to go on the top. Yep, I have a red light. Yep, yeah, you are on. Red light is danger. Go, on. go, go, go. Is that? Can you give me a bit more enthusiasm? Not, Not like, really. Go, go, go. Right, that's that. Yeah. No? Oh, you Right, welcome back. So our... Um, Pie filling has had a good couple of hours in the fridge. Don't and pick it up. Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. Well, I can pick it up by the edges. No, it's fine. Honestly, don't pick it up. There you go. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. And it's perfectly set, so it looks cool. So what we need to do now is just do the meringue topping. So first off, you need to heat your oven again to 220 degrees. So that's a really high oven, but we're not cooking this for very long. So we're going to make the meringue topping and then flash it in the oven for like a couple of minutes, five at the most, I'd say, until you sort of get a bit of a golden brown top. But basically, you're not cooking it all the way through. Yeah, it's not okay? a meringue nest. No, it's not no. a meringue nest. It's not gonna be crunchy. It's gonna be a soft meringue to go on the top of your lemon. One thing I will say is that if you're pregnant or if you're immunosuppressed or you have any other problems along those things, please don't do this because in effect, it's not properly cooked, if you like. Mm, it's cooked it's like enough, but it's gonna be a soft meringue. So I'd rather you didn't do it and not take the risk if it's gonna affect your health. Yeah, I'll do a pavlova in a few weeks time and you can have that on instead. Yeah, that'll be cooked through properly. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is you take your egg whites and you put them in a bowl. Simple as. Now you're going to need an electric whisk of some sort. So whether you've got a food processor or whether you've just got the hand hold whisky thing, either works perfectly fine. So to start off with, you're going to whisk until you get soft peaks. Did you mean a mixer as opposed to a food processor? Yeah, I mean like a mixer. One of like those big things in front of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I probably think there's probably a. There probably is, I've never that. used it for that yet. No, I just thought I should say, because someone's going to say, oh, I've got it in the food processor and it didn't quite like. Just yeah. You, you need to do soft peaks. So, here we go. Excuse the noise, although it actually isn't quite that noisy, yeah. is it? The one thing that you do need to make sure is that you've got an absolutely clean bowl because if there's any grease at all, it won't come to soft peaks. How are we doing? Right, I would say this is at soft peaks. Okay, so it's not completely hard but you can see where the whisk has been through it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a shape. But... Yeah. So that's soft peaks. Now, what you need to do now is beat in your leftover sugar. So the sugar that we've got left is what goes into our meringue. And basically we're gonna um, whisk this until this sugar is dissolved into the meringue base. Just lower it down. So don't put too much in it once, but just sort of dribble it in as it's going, okay? Now, I would say this is now at pretty much steep peaks. Steep peaks. Yeah, as you can, as you can, see. See, you can see from the actual um, mixing wire, they're not coming off the wire. Yeah. And the mix goes like glossy, which is really cool. So you need to scrape that off there. Best you can. I would like to make a little um, editing announcement right now. Right. Um, an official announcement to say that Kelly may not be quite as professional as she should be in the last part of this video. And the next what the last you part mean? of the other video. Can possibly comment. Well, what can you what do you do when you're doing a seven hour slow cook while you make a lamb meringue pie? But you're also doing a cocktail which will be coming out on Friday, um, and it's blue. You're doing this, why don't you? 
I am enjoying this. Yeah, I thought you might be. Yeah. What is it? There was summer else blue. What is it? Oh, this is this is a what do you mean? I know this is a bullfrog. Yeah. But there's, there's another blue drink as well. No, one. no, no. There's another drink. This blue. There's probably quite a few. Can't think what it is. And they're like one of these energy drinks or something. This blue. Quite possibly. I, I only drink from the can, so I never really. This see. is lovely though. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Not for giving you a lot of energy, but right. certainly, certainly help lubricate yourself today by the bit. Okay. Still going. I am lubricated. Exactly, yes, I am. that's what I thought. So at this point, you should have your oven at 220 degrees. She's well oiled by now, by the way, before I say. <laughs> Did on. anybody ask for your opinion? No. 220 degrees fan on your oven, 240 if you don't have a fan. I could probably find out. I would say it's 240 if it's 220. No, it doesn't tell me what it no. is in gas. So I, I, I thought Fine. I'd try and find out. Anyway, you've got stiff peaks in your meringue mix now. So what you do is with your cool. part, yeah. <laughs> with your base and your filling, you take a fork and you scruff it up. Well, I never knew that. Like Secrets that. of a lamb round pot. Yeah, you scruff it up. Not not too bad, but you just make it a bit more like a B room, A room. Whatever. Or that one. And then you put your meringue topping on. Like so. And then you can sort of do Oops. rough bits because the rough bits will be the bits that get the colour basically. There's no perfection about this. A lemon meringue pie is not about perfection, it's about deliciousness. Right. My oven is at temperature. Uh, baking sheet. onto the baking sheet. Now that's going to go in the oven now for between two and five minutes, obviously depending on how fierce your oven is. Keep an eye on Keep it. Keep an eye on it. Don't worry about the outside of the pastry because obviously that's going to get slightly darker. What you need to see is a little bit of colouring on the top of your meringue, but you're not looking to cook it all the way through. So don't worry that it's got to be in there for ages because it really doesn't. So let's stick it in and we'll be back when ours is a bit coloured. Okay, so that was in for three to four minutes, John, do you reckon? Yeah, probably no more than that. No more than that. As you can see, it's slightly brown on top. You can fluff up the peaks as much as you want or as little as you want. You can make them stiffer if you like, whatever, you know, suits yourself, basically. But that, my friends, is a lemon meringue pie. So what I would suggest is that you wait for it to cool completely and then um, because you've got a loose base tin, you can take it out of the... Oh, we have. Don't you're not supposed to it. say that, that's a blooper. Okay. <laughs> but you take it out of the actual um, tin and then you can cut it nicely, basically. Hope you enjoy it. It's a fantastic recipe. It absolutely tastes delicious. It's basically a lemon meringue pie from scratch, pastry and all. Looking good. The majority of the work is the waiting. Yeah, I guess I have to put, that's the thing with, with these sort of tart type yeah. things. You have to cut the pastry, then you have to do the filling. It's all those kind of takes yeah. time. So it's just the waiting around is the thing. But you know, if you don't mind waiting around like or if you've got other things to do. Stroke cooker, you've got yeah. other stuff to do. Carry um, on with it. You, you did say that it won't look as good tomorrow. No, um, they do recommend that when you eat a lemon meringue pie, it's best on the day that you actually bake it. Um, basically, because at the moment, that meringue is nice and fluffy. Yeah, it'll probably lose some of the Tomorrow, consistency. it will be a bit more um, gooey. Yeah, marshmallowy, I would say. Yeah, yeah. marshmallowy. Yeah. Still lovely, just Absolutely. wasn't quite as pretty. And you may also get a little bit of um, juice leakage from the custard yeah, type from thing. the filling. But, still, still to be quite it. honest, 
by the time we get to tomorrow anyway, there's not going to be much oh, left, so no. I won't worry about it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Do hit the subscribe button if you've not already done so. If you know anybody that hasn't subscribed that might like it, please do invite them. It'd be really great if you could, and we'd be really appreciative. Um, hit the notification bell so that you know when the next lot of recipes are coming up. We're trying to do three a week at the minute, quite successfully. There may be a couple of extra ones chucked in along the way. Yeah, throw a few little shorts in, little fun things. Yeah, to I've got a stuff. few things planned, maybe for next week. Um, once we hit a thousand subscribers, we can do live, which would be absolutely wonderful. It'd be really good to be able to talk to you as we're doing things. And especially for Cocktail Corner, it'd be really lovely to share a drink together and have a bit of a chat. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? So, um, but we need to get to a thousand first. So I think we've got about 8.30 odd, 8.40 yeah. yeah. So about sort of 1,700 to go. <laughs> How many? 1,700. No, no, no. 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 Just go. Just I'm go. sorry. And that's just not a good point when you're completely sober. When you've had a rather hefty cocktail, it's a bit no. worse. Go. 170 is That'll, what I meant. Close enough. Yeah. 170 to go. Excuse me. Let, let her go. Please let her go. Then she can finish a drink. <laughs> I'll see you all again next week. I'll see you all Friday for that. Just forget about this. I'll see you all Friday for that. Let's just forget about this bit, all right? And we'll see you all again next week. Uh, check in next week, by the way. See you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.